Well, hello Stampers, it's the Pampered Stamper and welcome to the weekly Tuesday Parcels in the Post video tutorial. So this is I think the third week already. It is just a few days before Christmas. Hope you're doing well and I hope that you get to celebrate with your family and your friends. Perhaps it'll be a smaller celebration than other years, but um, we make the best of it, right? So today I have two amazing cards for you. I can't wait to share them with you. Let us have a look. So the first one, and I've cased it from somebody, it's in my blog post whose idea this was. It was a European card, so I had to change it to inches. And I will share with you the measurements because that's the tricky part when you are making a card like this. It takes a little bit of guessing before it all fits just right. And we are using the Peaceful Deer stamp set and the coordinating punch for both of these cards. And I hope that you stay with me right to the end. The second card, I'll show it to you right now, um, is actually the card that started this all. And it is a fancy fold card and it goes like so. So I'm hoping to give you some tips and tricks for that one because the deer on here is reversed and there's a really easy way to make that happen with a special trick. All right, let's get started. Now, I didn't cut everything for this card yet. The card base is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And then this piece, the next piece, is a white piece that is four inches by five and a quarter. But I'm repurposing something. This came in the mail with my um, catalog, and it just felt like such lovely white cardstock, so I thought I'm going to use this side of it. Well, why not? It's going to get covered up anyway. I'm also using it for the deer. It worked just fine. So I should double check this to make sure I have it right. But it looks like it's right. Yeah, it's just a bit more than four inches. Yeah, it's going to be four inches by five and a quarter. So we'll just get it on here. Four inches by five and a quarter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a liquid adhesive because then you can slide things around. And rather than starting with the big square, I want to start with the smaller squares. The big square is two and a quarter, two and a half by two and a half. But I want to start kind of with the smaller ones because I want in this card, in my original, this doesn't go quite up to the top and I think I would like it to. Um, so I'm going to start with this one and I'm going to put it like so and then off a little bit and then I'll put this one on. That's how it's going to go. And I find that if you lay it straight on your grid paper, I'm going to move things a little bit. That is always, grid paper is wonderful and grid paper is available not just to demonstrators but it's in the catalog. Okay, so I'm just going to lay this like so, move it up a little bit, and that way I can see that that lines up with this one, and this kind of, yeah, I'm not sure if that's making any sense at all, but you know what, you can overthink things sometimes, and the thing is, just get started with one square, and then the rest of it will just fall into place. So... This one is going to go off a little bit, but right to the top. And as I look, I've already moved things. So I'm just going to put it like that. And then I, it looks like it's pretty straight. Okay. And then this piece is going to go like so. And then we're good to go. This is beautiful paper. And the reason I've called this series Parcels in the Post is because you can get a parcel in the post. What I've done is I've combined pattern paper with cardstock because if you're not a demonstrator, you might not need full packs of every color. So this enables you to get 10 sheets of cardstock, five different colors, and, oh, I'm missing something. Oh yeah, here it is. I want this birch paper. And the thing is, it just gives you a whole bunch of products together so that it doesn't break the bank and you don't have to buy everything. And uh, it's $25 for porch pickup 
and it's $32 mailed anywhere in Canada. I do have an American option on my blog. Um, you can check it out, pamperedstamper.com. And also, if you're watching and joining me for the first time, I would love it if you would subscribe. Oh, look, that's not the best either. So this is not perfectly straight. See, this one is reaches to the top, and this one doesn't. I'm just going to angle it a little bit. That's close enough. Okay. And then a little plaid one. So anyway, what was I saying? If you hit the red button in the bottom right corner, you can subscribe to my videos, to my channel, and then you won't miss any. And you have the opportunity to win a free bundle. Because when I get to, I don't want to put that one there. Maybe I'll put this one here. I'm going to switch this, this card up a little bit. Um, keep interrupting myself. So you can win the Poinsettia Petals bundle if you subscribe to my channel. So subscribe, comment, and share. So share my video on Facebook. I don't think you can face share them on Instagram. So sharing on Facebook would be awesome. And I forgot to add only adhesive to, this is gonna to stick to my cardstock. It's gonna to stick to my grid paper. I don't like that. So I'm turning it around and I'm gonna cut this off. It's a good thing I'm virtual today. I'm battling a cold and it's not always a pretty thing. So sometimes I have to blow my nose and I thankfully I can pause the video to do that. So another way, instead of getting glue where you don't want it to go, I'm just gonna put it in here on my base and then I don't have a problem, see? Sometimes we think on our feet. There. And I can use my paper trimmer afterwards also to, to uh, finish that. Here, I have another little piece here. Today, it actually froze in the Netherlands, which is quite unusual. And the ducks are having so much fun in the pond and the sun is shining. That's the beautiful thing about cold weather. Often when it's cold, we get sunshine. And I have missed the sunshine here. So I'm super happy about that. Before I started my video, I brought Gerard back to the greenhouse. And on the way, I stopped by um, a little booth that sells Olubolin and it sells um, apple vignettes. So I have one of those waiting for me. That's my treat after I finish this video. Not fun. I thought so. So you could just cover the whole thing with liquid glue, but I don't really want to do that because I don't want it to dry ahead of me. So I'm not being as particular. I'm just going to move that around a bit so I get it covered. This is like a patchwork technique. It's a lot of fun. I love our pattern papers and I love playing around with stuff like this. And let's see, we're going to do another. Oh, I need to do a stripe because I forgot the stripe on the last place. Okay. I know this one's going to be there, the whole thing, so I can do the whole thing. You can see I'm switching up how I adhere things, which is totally squirrely, but. You know what? You got to do what works. There you go. But anyway, like I was saying, I love this technique because it shows how all the pattern paper coordinates and what is more cozy than snuggling under a quilt at Christmas time. I think I love wood stoves. I love fires. I love cozy quilts, fuzzy blankets, all that kind of stuff. Reading books. Netflix, uh, fun Christmas movies, that's always nice, puts you in a good mood, right? A little break from reality. Yeah. And it's so important to just really be grateful because it's okay to mourn what we don't have, but uh, when you exercise gratitude, it really does help, it makes a difference. Now, what else do I still need? I need another birch piece here. I'm going to do a birch piece right down here. And 
I like patchwork quilting with paper rather than fabric because it's a little bit more like instant gratification. You don't have as much to lose if you screw up. And oh goodness, now I'm getting all mixed up. No, no, it does go that way. We'll put this one over here. The little bits are the trickiest, but if you don't think about it too much, don't worry because at the end we're going to turn it around and cut all our little bits off. It feels really bad to do that, but it's okay. We'll put a little deer in here. So anyway, yes, I hope that you um, check out my parcels in the post. So you get six, no, 12 pieces of this pattern paper, six inches by 12. And the reason I made them that size is so that you could make the next card because you need a 12 inch piece. So that was my thinking with that. I think we'll put another little snowflakey here. There. And you get 10 sheets of cardstock. You also get a sheet of this nice glimmer paper. You can't get that anymore. And you get four yards of ribbon and two yards of twine. So you'll have everything that you need to, um, to make the cards that I share every Tuesday. Now, I haven't made a tutorial yet, a PDF. I might do that. Because um, that's really nice. Then you can make the cards if you already have the product. So on this one, we'll do one more little stripey piece. And then we're done. But I'm going to let this dry for a minute so that I can turn it around. Hopefully it's not stuck. It's a little stuck. See, and then I'll just put it in the paper trimmer rather than use scissors to cut all that off. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to stamp this deer, this guy, in real red. And I actually did it on that crazy paper here because it, it worked. Hmm. Okay, so real red. I thought maybe it would smear because it feels a little bit glossy, but it didn't. When you stamp your deer, you want to make the legs go down because then it will fit your punch. I'll show you. I should have showed you this before. So one, two, three, four, five. So always turn your punch upside down and take a look at how it goes because it's going to slide in like this. If I had stamped my deer up here, it wouldn't have fit with the punch. And then slide it in and kind of look at all the lines and make sure that they look good especially with the legs and then squeeze and there we have it and what we need now with the deer I'm just going to close well no I'm not going to close that yet I need the Merry Christmas I'm going to make a little bow and then we can just adhere that to the neck of the deer. This is linen thread, which is a really an awesome product from Stampin' Up. I will include the products in the list underneath. If you look at the description of the video, you'll be able to see the product list. If you click on those, you'll be right in my store. See, oh, the bow is a little bit overdone. I can make it a bit smaller. And then we'll just adhere that with a glue dot. Glue dots are amazingly strong. So you don't want to touch them with your fingers, so just uncover the last blue dot. Take your linen bow, give it a shove on there, and pull it off. And then you can maybe, I just lied, I did touch it with my fingers. There, give it a press, and it's good to go. And now we're going to fix our sheet. We've got our deer, we're going to take this and we're going to trim it. So you lay it on a paper trimmer. The paper trimmer is an amazing tool and I'm just going to line up that right down the middle and here we go. See that just cut them all off and now I have a nice edge to go on. The first cut is the most difficult. So now we're just lining it up like that Turn it around, it up. and you could use all those little bits for another card. You don't have to waste them. There, 
now we have it all nice and neat and clean. So that looks good. Now we can put it on our card. See? Looks good. So really, it's not a difficult card, and I was able to reuse and recycle. I love that. Gives your card a little bit more sturdiness. And here we go. Put it this way. And because I use liquid adhesive, I can kind of slide it so that it's exactly where I want it to go. Now we're just going to take the deer and we're going to pop it up. Look at I have almost all my I have two left, but you can use your edge pieces too. Do not throw it out. I've seen a newbie throw this out. Don't do that. You can just take it and you don't even have to use scissors. See, and now I'm going to pop up the head as well. And then we just have to stamp our Merry Christmas. So I like to put that up a little bit higher, like so. And then we'll put a Merry Christmas right here. And the Merry Christmas is also from this stamp set, okay? So let's find it, here we go. And with photopolymer sets, just lay them flat on your surface and then pick them up with the block because otherwise they could be crooked because photopolymer is um, kind of soft and flexible. So here we go again. Tap, tap, tap. Make sure you've got good coverage. And I'm just going to stamp it right in the middle. And I'm not looking right over top of it. It's not perfect. If I, I used my Stamparatus, it would have been. Let's see. That one maybe looks better. We'll see as soon as we get our paper trimmer out. I have to get all my little bits of paper off of it. Here we go. I still have one stuck. Do you see it? Actually, you know what? I did quite well. I'm impressed with myself. I apologize if you for the rasp. My voice is still a little bit raspier than usual. I do not smoke, but I do have a cold. There, that should not be there. There. I want this to be fairly skinny. So I'm just sliding it over, and this is the cutting line. There, perfect. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to cut it into a little banner shape. So I'm cutting it off here, and here, and then I cut down the middle, and then from the corner to the middle. There we go, there's one, and there's two. Did I get right to the middle? I did. Okay, so now we're going to put a little bit of a dimension on. See how I'm using my edge pieces? Works perfectly. Nice skinny little piece here. You could also use mini dimensionals. and. There we go. And isn't that pretty? Now for the inside, you could take a piece of white that's four inches by five and a quarter and then just put an extra piece of your pattern paper here. It's three quarters of an inch by four inches. So those are, that's the card. And you can see I've, I've changed up a little bit the way I moved my squares around but it looks really nice doesn't it so there's no rules I went with a red and a white and Sahara sand a real red Sahara sand those are the colors of the cardstock as well that come in your parcels in the post okay so are you ready for card number two let's get myself all set up for that okay so before I get started on this card I want to show you what you get in your parcels in the post at least some of it so you're getting a six by six piece of this beautiful bedazzling glimmer paper and then I don't have a, a big piece of this left but you're gonna get this as well as this polka dot piece I made a gift bag out of that two weeks ago so I used it all up so you're getting that 
and then a six by 12 piece of all of these patterns. And they're really lovely. It's called Peaceful Place, I think. Peaceful Prints. And then I'm actually going to take this one out because we need this one for our card. And that's the other side of it. So you're getting 12 sheets that are 6 by 12. And they're really quite, I love it. I absolutely love this paper so, so much. So I'm so happy to be able to offer it to you. Okay, we'll move that out of the way. And now we need a six, uh, five and a quarter piece by 11 and three quarters. So let's go to five and a quarter. And we need it by 11 and three quarters, which means I just have to cut off a quarter of an inch over here. And then we need to score it. But when you score it, you want to make sure you don't press hard because it's pattern paper and you don't want it to break. I went a little bit too hard. So let me find my little sticky note. You want to score it at one and three quarters. So remember, score lightly. One and three quarters, four and three quarters. Let's see. Lightly. And then at seven and three quarters. So here we go. Lightly. So let's see how I did. I hope I did not break my paper. And this piece, <coughs> no, yes, it goes this way. And then this piece goes the other way. So it's a bit of an accordion fold. There, and I don't see any breaks, so that's good. That whole piece is now going to go on a red cardstock base. That's the same size as a card would be. It's four and a quarter by five and a half. See, and then you have that edge going all the way around. Now, I do have something missing. This card, if you look really carefully right here, it has the, um, that edge. It's from the borders dies, the basic borders dies. I don't have them here in Holland, so I'm going to make it without that. This little pretty label die is from the So Succulents, and in Holland it's called Plonten Post. I only have the stamp set here and not the die, so I'm going to be using a die from Christmas season, and it's this one. It's pretty too, but it doesn't have the stitching. Oh, look, my ring is upside down. So we're also using the Encircled in Warmth stamp set and the Encircled in Beauties dies. So let's have a look. This is the stamp set, and then these are the dies. The dies actually belong in a set from the annual catalog called Encircled in Friendship. But yeah, I just wanted the Encircled in Warmth. So it's very cool. I have already die cut, so I'm just gonna show you what I have. So we have the card base, and then this. We have our deer. And we have this white piece that's an encircled in warmth die. This one is as well. And look, when you cut this one out, it has a circle that comes out of the middle. So I did one in white as well because I need a white circle for the inside. And I need a red one for this on the back. Okay. Now, one other thing. To make this deer, let me show you. You use the punch, but the problem is, here's the punch, and there's the deer. The deer is going the wrong way. See, that won't work. So how did I get that deer? I'll tell you what I did. I took a piece of cardstock, and everyone else has been using either vellum or a clear acetate. And I thought, well, why not use cardstock? That works just fine. And I had a little piece that I was going to use. Let me see if I can find that for you. I want to show you this trick because it's really important. So here I have a piece of the pattern paper. And what you do is you take, oh, turn it around. You take this and just let me move this all out of the way. You take it and you slide it around till it is 
good. Now, especially pay attention to the legs because that's the easiest thing to mess up. And the outline is not exactly the same all the way around. So if you're a perfectionist, it's going to drive you a little bit crazy. And it's really hard to do this on camera. But that looks, see how the ear isn't perfect? But it's really, really hard to get it exactly right. But once you have it, that looks pretty good. Then you hold on tight. You can use a clip if you want, but just hold on tight. Turn it around. And then with a pencil, you are going to trace your deer. Okay, so you trace your deer. If, I have, if you have a white gel pen, that's even better. But the pencil works quite well if you have good lighting. And you trace your deer. And then you could punch them out. And I'm going to show you what happens if you don't pay enough attention to detail. They're, they don't always turn out perfectly. So tell yourself that you might mess up on one or two. But I found that it was easy to use the cardstock. I liked having a cardstock base rather than vellum because it's stronger and it's easier to see. You don't have to be able to see through the edges. Okay, so then we'll go like so and you slide it in. And as soon as you have your legs just about perfect, then Check the rest to make sure it's okay. You don't want to cut his tail off or anything. And I think that looks pretty good, so I'm going to go for it. And look, I did it. Isn't that great? So I'm going to show you. I have one that I've cut out that was not good. Now, of course, I can't find it. I did put it here. If I find it again, I will show you. Oh, here it is. Look, here's a deer that was not cut out well. See, there's way too much white and I cut half his leg off. So if you're off just a little bit, you will miss out on his legs, okay? So that's the trick, that's the, if you only come away with one thing from this, that's, a, that's it's amazing. Okay, so before we do anything else, I'm going to take now the twine. Did I show you the ribbon? I forgot to show you the ribbon that comes in the parcels in the post. You get red ribbon, you get gingham ribbon, you get gold ribbon, and you get the Playful Pets ribbon, which is hiding on me right now. And that's the one I need for this card. So that's not good. Oh, here it is. It's under the stamp set. So we're not actually, we use this, I use this on one tag, but not on any of the cards. We're using this today, and we want a double length. Okay. And we're just going to wrap it around like so. And I suppose I could wrap it around the whole card. What did I do? No, 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 it doesn't go around the whole card. Because you want, it to be able to, you want to be able to open it up. If you do it around the card, it'll be sealed shut. And I like to have a nice thick bow, and that's why I went with a double. Okay. I love this black and white baker's twine. It is so nice, it's nice and thick. It ties beautifully. And I just wasted a little bit, not bad at all. There, so we have that, and now I'm going to glue it on my card base, and then we'll do some more stamping. It's such a shame to cover this up, isn't it? I agree, but it's beautiful paper, it's a beautiful card, and it's probably the last Christmas card I'll be making. Although, you know what? I like to make Christmas cards all year round because it's so nice to have a stash ahead of time. Making Christmas cards should be fun and not stressful, so don't leave it to the last couple weeks. There. I could slide this down a little bit. Okay, so now we wanna do this, and it's gonna go like so. I only need adhesive on this little bit here. So, a little bit of adhesive. This stuff is super strong. So that's another benefit of using liquid adhesive. It really is, it dries incredibly strong. Here, and it's about halfway. And you'll see that even though I'm missing my um, basic borders dies, it still looks really pretty without it. 
So sometimes we tell ourselves that we want everything, but we don't really need everything. Sometimes you can live without it. That's a very bad sales pitch on my part, but it is the truth. And I'm wondering, I would love to hear from you guys what you've been stamping with. Have you been cutting back on your stamp purchases? Or have you been going full steam ahead? Um, there are uncertain times with COVID and some people have been doing really well and some people are struggling. So I'm just gonna put that one going like so. And then here is the Merry Christmas. And we're gonna stamp it in black. Now, a trick that I like to do, no, I don't have it here. I was hoping I had my mask, but I don't. So I'm just going to ink it up and hope for the best. Usually I like to use a mask and then I use my Stamparatus so that I can stamp it a few times. You know what? I'm not gonna be lazy. I'm gonna show you that trick. Okay, so this is where I've cut out that little die. So I'm putting it in my Stamparatus, and then I'm laying the stamp right in the black negative space so I can have a really good view. That looks just about perfect. Pick it up, and then I'm going to put my little label that I've already cut out. So you can cut a whole bunch of these and then stamp a whole bunch without stressing over whether or not they're in the exact right spot or not. Oh, here's my memento. Did it move? No, it's good. And that way, if it's not dark enough, I can stamp again. You know what? That looks just fine. Here we go. Remove the stamparatus. And now I can pop this up here. And I want it extending a little bit, or it can go this way too. No, maybe that's better. So I should be using my little minis, but I want to use up my extra little bits here. So here we go. I like to straddle the ribbon to make it a bit stronger there. So now we have our Merry Christmas. And in the inside, let me open this up. On this side, we want this. And then warm Christmas wishes is going to go inside. Now, I don't know if I kept a negative from that. I think I cleaned up way too much of my stuff. So, and then I need a silicone mat. Whenever you want to um, glue detailed things, it's really nice to have it. I think I cut myself off there. I was saying it's really nice to do this with a sponge and a silicone mat. So flip this over because you know your die cut does have a good side and a, bi a bad side. So this is nice rounded edges and this is kind of yeah choppy looking. So take your sponge, flatten your glue and this just gently dab all over it. And then you have no oozing and you have great stickiness there. And then just put that back on there, lift it gently, put your silicone mat out of the way. And I want that to be straight up and down, those little pointy parts there. Beautiful. Now I'm going to lay this inside and I'm going to use the Stamparatus. We're going to see if this works. I'm going to put it in like this. And you know, I was so quick to move my my uh, my magnet that I've lost it. Oh, here it is. I don't know how I did that, really. I have a cold, and I swear my brain is not, it's just a little bit foggy. So this is going to say warm Christmas wishes. Oh, and guess what? It has, it's got stuff stuck to it, little bits. This is a rubber stamp, which means I do not need the black insert. So insert gone. Here we go. And I have to think carefully. Warm Christmas wishes has to go like so. 
And it's nice that it's kind of a curvy font. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. So that is nice. Let me turn this so that you guys can see it a little bit better. And real red. And then the last thing we're going to do is make a panel with a stitched rectangle. There we go. I'm sorry about my computer making noises, notifications. Oh, look at that. That looks really nice. Do I dare go again? Do I really want to try? I don't think anything moved, so I'm going to do it. Yes. Awesome. Okay, that worked really well. I'm really happy with that. Okay. So we can adhere that now. Let's see, let's pop it out. You could pop this up too if you wanted to, you know, make it a little more special, but you don't want your card to be too thick because then you're going to have to pay extra postage. You don't want to do that. So there we go. Have I sold you on the Stamparatus yet? It really is a fantastic tool. Okay. So now we have a red rectangle that I've already cut two inches by three and three eighths. And it's going to go here. And yeah. And then this one is going to say, what shall we say? Sending love and peace this season. Oh, guess what? I need another deer that I totally forgot about. And that saying is from Peaceful Deer. So it's right here. I like it a lot. And now it's a photopolymer, which means we need the black insert in the Stamparatus again. So yeah, my Stamparatus never gets put away. I have it on my desk all the time. Anything that is on your desk all the time is a very good tool to have. I'm, usually I clean this off first, but I'm not exercising the best practices. Always stamp as far away from your hinge as possible. You get the best coverage. So that's going to be stamped in black. Let's take a look. See, let's close it up. And I always check to see that it's straight and it's not quite straight. There's a grid lines on your Stamparatus to help you with that. Now, mind you, some days you just have a crooked eye. So cut yourself a little slack. If your card isn't perfect, people will still be really happy that you made them one. It's better to send an imperfect card than not to send a card. And I always say, if someone comments that your card isn't perfect, invite them to come with to your next class to see if they can do better. There you go. Okay, let's put that away. And now we're going to put this, this is the third largest stitched rectangle here, I'll show you what I mean. The stitched rectangles are an amazing investment because look how many it comes with. Let's see, can I see what I'm doing? Yes. So this one almost, it's the, the smallest, squattest one. Then there's a separate section. When I say the third largest, it means in this big section here. So we use this one here, okay? And it stitches, it's double stitched. It stitched the part that cuts out and it also stitches the opening that's left behind, the negative space. So that's good to know. I think this is going to be my longest video yet. I hope that you watch till the end. Um, it's just another wonderful way that I connect with you. And I'm really grateful for each one of you. I love it when you take the time to comment because sometimes when you do things in cyberspace, you wonder who's all paying attention. So. Yeah, sometimes you think, oh, well, she does so much and she has so many comments or followers or whatever. It doesn't matter. You matter. So that's going to go here. Don't you just love it with all those black and white snowflakes around? I love this paper so much. Okay, now somewhere I have another deer that I cut out. Now you could use the deer from the paper that's been cut out or... You could use a stamp deer. I had an extra one of those too. But I really like, see that looks nice too. Then you have a different deer. But I found this one and I do like that. I do love the consistency of the whole thing. Okay. 
yeah, let's uh, let's pop him up. There. And there. Okay. My fingers are a mess. There we go. And here we have him. Actually, you know what? I see that little bit of leg sticking out. I want to cover that up. And that way I just look at that. Isn't that nice? I love this card so much. And I didn't cut anything. Now, this one's lovely. And here's the original that has um, that little, little um, edgelet there. You don't miss it too much, do you? All right, guys, we made it. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I'm just so happy. Today's the first day that I've worked a whole day where I haven't been in bed and I didn't sleep in till 1030. So I'm on the mend. Um, I'll be able to celebrate Christmas in health and I'm so happy about that. So I'm just going to finish off with this. Um, you can check out my blog. On my blog you will find my tutorials that you can buy. Um, you can find the information about parcels in the post. I think it's under a, a, a title called services and you can check me out on Facebook for personal stuff and uh, also stamping stuff of course. And you can email me if you need to get a hold of me. So thanks a lot for joining me. I hope you have a super day and a wonderful Christmas. God bless you.